Okay, so all said for the last and very exciting session for the day. Um, uh, let me invite you, uh, Andrew uh, Knight. Um, he is uh, automation panda engineer. Uh, he has represented so many international conferences, a webinar, and doing a lot of things for the uh, quality assurance community. He has designed and built a robust test automation project for operating system. Wow. Um, yeah, testing APIs as services and applications. Also, uh, he is, you know, he's writing a lot of blogs. I think it's uh, automationpanda.com if if I correctly spell it out uh, or uh, use it. So he's writing a lot of blog and information with respect to his work, uh, helping a community. And today he is going to talk about the screenplay pattern. Uh, the better interactions for better automation. Wow, I mean the name itself looks very exciting. So uh, over to you, Andrew. Uh, uh, we welcome you uh, um, uh, from ATS side and looking forward to a great learning insight from you. All viewers, thank you. Great, thank you, thank you. Okay. Uh, Can everyone yeah. see my screen? Uh, we can see you, but uh, uh, I'm not sure, but I'm not able to see your slides if you are sharing anything. Okay, let me try that again. One moment. Okay. How about now? Perfect. Yeah. Great. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Well, hello everyone, and thank you for attending my talk today. I'd personally like to thank Agile Testing Alliance for organizing Selenium Summit 21. My name is Andrew Knight, or Pandy for short. I'm the automation panda. I build solutions to testing problems. I'm currently the lead software engineer and test at Precision Lender, a Q2 company. Be sure to read my blog and follow me on Twitter at Automation Panda. Today, I'm going to introduce you to a new way to automate interactions, the screenplay pattern. The screenplay pattern isn't exactly new. It's been around for a number of years, but it is still new to a lot of folks in our industry. I strongly believe that screenplay is a much better way to interact with web pages than the page object model. In this talk today, I'll back up that claim in three parts. First, I'll cover problems with traditional ways of automating interactions. Second, I'll explain why the screenplay pattern is a better way. And third, I'll show how to use the screenplay pattern with a C Sharp library named Boa Constrictor. Boa Constrictor is an open source .NET implementation of the screenplay pattern developed by my team and me at Precision Lender. To start, Let's define that big I word I keep tossing around. Interactions. Simply put, interactions are how users operate software. For this video, I'll focus on web UI interactions, like clicking buttons and scraping text. Interactions are indispensable to testing. The simplest way to define testing is interaction plus verification. That's it. You do something, and you make sure it works. Think about any functional test case that you've ever written or executed. The test case was a step-by-step -step procedure in which each step had interactions and verifications. Here's an example of a simple DuckDuckGo search test. DuckDuckGo is a search engine like Google or Yahoo. The steps here are very straightforward. Opening the search engine requires navigation. Searching for a phrase requires entering keystrokes and clicking the search button. Verifying results requires scraping the page title and result links from the new page. Interactions are everywhere. Unfortunately, our industry struggles to handle automated web UI interactions well. Even though most teams use Selenium WebDriver and their test automation code, Every team seems to use it differently. There's a lot of duplicate code and flakiness too. Let's take a look at the way many teams evolve their WebDriver-based interactions. I will use C-sharp for code examples, 
And I'll continue to use DuckDuckGo for testing. When teams first start writing test automation code using Selenium WebDriver, they frequently write raw calls. Anyone familiar with the WebDriver API should recognize these calls. The WebDriver object is initialized using, let's say, Chrome Driver for the browser. The first step to open the search engine calls driver.navigate.gotoURL with the DuckDuckGo website address. The second step performs the search by fetching web elements using driver.findElements with locators such as by.id and then calling methods like send keys and click. The third step uses assertions to verify the contents of the page title and the existence of result links. Finally, at the end of the test, the web driver quits the browser for cleanup. Like I said, these are all common web driver calls. Unfortunately, there's a big problem with this code. Race conditions. There are three race conditions in this code in which the automation does not wait for the page to be ready before making interactions. WebDriver does not automatically wait for elements to load or for titles to appear. Waiting is a huge challenge for web UI automation, and it is one of the main reasons for what we call flaky tests. We could set an implicit wait that will make calls wait until target elements appear, but they don't work for all cases, such as the title in race condition number two. Explicit weights provide a much more uh, bleh, explicit weights provide much more control over waiting, timeout, and conditions. They use a web driver wait object with a preset timeout value, and they must be placed explicitly throughout the code. Here, they are placed in the three spots where race conditions could happen. Each wait.until call takes in a function that returns true when the condition is satisfied. <laughs> These weights are necessary, but they cause new problems. First, they cause duplicate code because the web element locators are used multiple times. Notice how search form input homepage is called twice here. Second, raw calls with explicit weights make code less intuitive. If I remove the comments from each paragraph of code, like I just did, what's left is a wall of text. It is difficult to understand what this code does at, at a glance. To remedy these problems, most teams use the page object pattern. In the page object pattern, each page is modeled as a class with locator variables and interaction methods. So, a search page class could look like this. At the top, there could be a constant for the page URL and variables for the search input and search button locators. Notice how each has an intuitive name. Next, there could be a variable to hold the web driver reference. This reference would come via dependency injection through a constructor. The first method would be a load method that navigates the browser to the page's URL. And the second method would be a search method that waits for elements to appear, enters the phrase into the input field, and clicks the search button. This page object has a decent structure and a mild separation of concerns. Locators and interactions have meaningful names. Page objects require a few more lines of code than raw calls at first, but their parts can easily be reused. The original test steps can be rewritten using this new search page class. Notice how much cleaner this new code looks. The other steps can be rewritten using page objects as well. The 
Unfortunately, page objects themselves suffer problems with duplication in their interaction methods. Suppose a page object needs a method to click an element. We already know the logic. Wait for the element to exist, then click it. But what about clicking another element? This method is essentially hard coded for one button. A second click method is needed to click the other button. Fortunately, the code for both methods is the same. The code will be the same for any other click method too. This is copy pasta, and it happens all the time in page objects. I've seen page objects grow to be thousands of lines long due to duplicative methods like these. At some point, some teams will say, aha, more duplicate code? We can solve this problem with more object-oriented programming. And they'll create the infamous base page, a parent class for all other page object classes. Base page will have variables for WebDriver and the wait objects. We'll also provide common interaction methods, such as this click method that can click on any element. Abstraction for the win, right? Child pages will inherit everything from the base page. Child page interaction methods frequently just call base page methods. I've seen many teams stop here and say, this is good enough. Unfortunately, this really isn't very good at all. The base page helps mitigate code duplication, but it doesn't solve its root cause. Page objects inherently combine two separate concerns, page structure and interactions. Interactions are often generic enough to be used on any web element. Coupling interaction code with specific locators or pages forces testers to add new page object methods for every type of interaction needed for an element. Every element could potentially need a click, a text, a displayed, or any other type of web driver interaction. That's a lot of extra code that shouldn't be necessary. The base page also becomes very top heavy as testers add more and more code to share. Most frustratingly, the page object code I showed here is merely one type of implementation. What do your page objects look like? I bet dollars to donuts they look different than mine. Page objects are completely freeform. Every team implements them differently. There's no official version of the page object pattern. There's no conformity in its design. Even worse, within its design, there's almost no way for the page object pattern to enforce good practices. That's why people argue over things like whether page object locators should be public or private. Page objects would be better described as a convention than a true design pattern. There must be a better way to handle interactions. Thankfully, there it is. Let's take a closer look at how interactions happen. First, there's someone who initiates the interactions. Usually, this is a user. They're the ones making the clicks and taking the scrapes. Let's call them the actor. Second, there's this thing under test. For our example in this talk, that's a web app. It has pages with elements. Web page structure is modeled using locators to access page elements from the DOM. Keep in mind though, the thing under test could also be anything else, like a mobile app, microservice, or even a command line. Third, there are the interactions themselves. For web apps, they could be simple clicks and keystrokes, or they could be more complex interactions, like logging into the app or searching for a phrase. Each interaction will do the same type of operation on whatever target page or element it is given. Finally, there are objects that enable actors to perform certain types of interactions. For example, Browser interactions need a tool like Selenium WebDriver to make those clicks and take those scrapes. 
let's call those things abilities. Actors, abilities, and interactions are each different types of concerns. We could summarize their relationship in one line. Actors use abilities to perform interactions. Actors use abilities to perform interactions. This is the heart of the screenplay pattern. In the page object convention, page objects become messy because concerns are all combined. The screenplay pattern separates concerns for maximal reusability and scalability. So, let's learn how to use screenplay using BOA Constrictor. BOA Constrictor is an open source C Sharp implementation of the screenplay pattern that my team and I developed at Precision Lender. Like I said before, it is the cornerstone of Precision Lender's end-to-end -end test automation solution. It can be used with any .NET framework, like SpecFlow or NUnits. The GitHub repository name is Q2eBanking slash BOA-Constrictor, and the NuGet package is named BOA.Constrictor. Let's rewrite that DuckDuckGo search test from before using BOA-Constrictor. If you're watching this live or watching the recording, I recommend just reading along with the code as it appears on the screen to get the concepts. Trying to code along in real time might be a challenge. After the talk, you can take the official BOA Constrictor tutorial to get hands on with the code. To use BOA Constrictor, you will need to install the BOA Constrictor and Selenium WebDriver NuGet packages. My example code will also use Fluent Assertions and Chrome Driver. The actor is the entity that initiates interactions. All screenplay calls start with an actor. Most test cases need only one actor. The actor class optionally takes two arguments. The first argument is a name, which can help describe who the actor is. The name will appear in logged messages. The second argument is a logger, which will send log messages from screenplay calls to a target destination. Loggers must implement Bow Constrictor's iLogger interface. Console Logger is a class that will log messages to the system console. You can define your own custom loggers by implementing iLogger yourself. Abilities enable actors to initiate interactions. For example, an actor needs a Selenium WebDriver instance to click elements on a web page. Read this new line in plain English. The actor can browse the web with a new Chrome driver. Bow Constrictor's fluent-like syntax makes its call chains very readable. Actor.can adds an ability to an actor. Browse the web is the ability that enables actors to perform web UI interactions. Browse the web.with provides the Selenium web driver object that the actor will use, which in this case is a new Chrome driver object. Bow Constrictor supports all browser types. All abilities must implement the iAbility interface. Actors can be given any number of abilities. Browse the web simply holds a reference to the WebDriver object. Web UI interactions will retrieve this WebDriver object from the actor. Before the actor can call any WebDriver-based interactions, the web pages under test need models. These models should be static classes that include locators for elements on the page and possibly page URLs. The page classes should only model structure. They should not include any interaction logic. The screenplay pattern separates the concerns of page structure from interactions. That way, interactions can target any elements, maximizing code reusability. Interactions like clicks and scrapes work the same regardless of the target elements. The search page class has two members. First, sorry, the first member is a URL string named URL. 
The second member is a locator for the search input element named search input. Boa constrictor, a locator has two parts. First, it has a plain language description that will be used for logging. Second, it has a query that is used to find the element on the page. Boa constrictor uses Selenium WebDriver's by queries. For convenience, locators can be constructed using the statically imported L method. The screenplay pattern has two types of interactions. The first type of interaction is called a task. A task performs actions without returning a value. Examples of tasks include clicking an element, refreshing the browser, and loading a page. These interactions all do something rather than get something. Bow Constrictor provides a task named Navigate for loading a web page using a target URL. Read this line in plain English. The actor attempts to navigate to the URL for the search page. Again, Boa Constrictor's fluent-like syntax is very readable. Clearly, this line will load the DuckDuckGo search page. Actor dot attempts to calls a task. All tasks must implement the iTask interface. When the actor calls attempt to on the task, it calls the tasks perform as method. Navigate is the name of the task and dot to URL provides the target URL. The navigates perform as method fetches the web driver object from the actor's ability and uses it to load the given URL. Search page dot URL comes from the search page class we previously wrote. Putting the URL in the page class makes it universally available. The second type of interaction is called a question. A question returns an answer after performing actions. Examples of questions include getting an element's text, location, and appearance. Each of these interactions returns some sort of value. Bow Constrictor provides a question named value attribute that gets the value of the text currently inside an input field. Read this line in plain English. The actor asking for the value attribute of the search page's search input element should be empty. Actor.AskingFor calls a question. All questions must implement the iQuestion interface. When the actor calls asking for or the equivalent asks for method, it calls the questions request as method. Value attribute is the name of the question and dot of provides the target web elements locator. Value attributes request as method fetches the web driver object, waits for the target element to exist on the page, and scrapes and returns its value attributes. Search page dot search input is the locator of the search input. It comes from the search page class. Finally, once the value is obtained, the test must make an assertion on it. Should be empty is a fluent assertion that verifies that the search input field is empty when the page is first loaded. The test case's next step is to enter a search phrase. Doing this requires two interactions, typing the, typing the search phrase <coughs> into the search input and clicking the search button. However, since searching is such a common operation, we can create a custom interaction by composing the lower level interactions together. The search DuckDuckGo task takes in a search phrase. <clears throat> in the form as method, it calls two other interactions, send keys and click. In one task to combine these lower level interactions makes the test code more readable and understandable. It also provides automation reusability. Read this line in plain English now. The actor attempts to search DuckDuckGo for Panda. That's concise and intuitive. 
The last test case step should verify that the result links appear after entering a search phrase. Unfortunately, this step has a race condition. The result page takes a few seconds to display result links. Automation must wait for those result links to appear. Checking too early will make the test case fail. Thankfully, Boa Constrictor makes waiting easy. Read this line in plain English. The actor attempts to wait until the appearance of result page result links is equal to true. In simpler terms, wait until the result links appear. In newer versions of Boa Constrictor, we've shortened this call even further to actor dot waits until whatever question you have. Wait is a special task. It will repeatedly call a question until the answer meets a given condition. For this step, the question is the appearance of result links on the result page. Before links are loaded, this question will return false. Once links appear, it will return true. Waiting can take any type of question. The condition for waiting is for the answer value to become true. Bow Constrictor provides several conditions out of the box, such as equality, mathematical comparisons, and string matching. You can also implement custom conditions by implementing the I condition interface. Waiting is smart. It will repeatedly ask the question until the answer is met, and then it will move on. This makes waiting much more efficient than hard sleeps. If the answer does not meet the condition within the timeout, then the wait will raise an exception. The default timeout is 30 seconds, but it can be overridden. Many of Boa's constrictors web driver based interactions already handle waiting. Anything that uses a target element, such as click, send keys, or text, will wait for the element to exist before attempting the operation. We saw this in some of the previous example code. However, there are times where explicit weights are needed. Interactions that, that query appearance, existence, or count do not automatically wait. The final step is to quit the web browser. Bow Constrictor's quit web driver task does this for you. If you don't quit the browser, then it will remain open and turn into a zombie. Always, always, always quit the browser. Furthermore, in whatever test framework you use, put the steps to quit the browser in a cleanup or teardown routine so that it is called even when the test fails. And there we have our completed test using Boa Constrictor's screenplay pattern. All the separated concerns come together beautifully to handle interactions in a much better way. As we said before, the screenplay pattern can be summed up in one line. Actors use abilities to perform interactions. It's that simple. Actors use abilities to perform interactions. For those who like object-oriented programming, screenplay pattern is, in a sense, a solid refactoring of the page object convention. Solid refers to five design principles for maintainability and extensibility. I won't go into detail about each principle here because the information is a bit dense, but if you're interested, then snap a quick screenshot and check out each of these principles later. Wikipedia is a good source. You'll find that the screenplay pattern follows each one nicely. So as we wrap up here, why should you use the screenplay pattern over page object convention or raw web driver calls? There are a few key reasons. First, the screenplay pattern, and specifically the Boa Constrictor project, provide rich, reusable, reliable interactions out of the box. Boa Constrictor already has tasks and questions for every type of web driver based interaction. Each one is battle hardened and safe. Second, screenplay interactions are composable. Like we saw with searching for a phrase, you can easily combine interactions. This makes code easier to use and reuse, and it avoids lots of duplication. 
Third, the screenplay pattern makes waiting easy using existing questions and conditions. Waiting is one of the toughest parts of black box, black box automation. Fourth, screenplay calls are readable and understandable. They use a fluent-like syntax that reads more like prose than code. Finally, the screenplay pattern at its core is a design pattern for any type of interaction. In this talk, I showed how to use it for web UI interactions, but the screenplay pattern could also be used for mobile, REST API, and other platforms. You can make your own interactions too. Overall, the screenplay pattern provides better interactions for better automation. That's the point. It's not just another Selenium WebDriver wrapper. It's not just a new spin on page objects. Screenplay is a great way to exercise any feature behaviors under test. And as we saw before, the screenplay pattern isn't that complicated. Actors use abilities to perform interactions. That's it. The programming behind it just has some nifty dependency injection. If you'd like to start using the screenplay pattern for your test automation, there are a few ways to get started. Programming in C Sharp, you can use BOA Constrictor, the library I showed in the examples. You can download BOA Constrictor as a NuGet package. It works with any .NET framework, like SpecFlow and NUnit. I recommend taking the hands-on tutorial so you can develop a test automation project yourself with BOA Constrictor. Also, since BOA Constrictor is an open source project, I'd love for you to contribute. At Precision Lender, we have over 1,500 unique web UI tests written with SpecFlow and BOA Constrictor, and they run continuously, nightly, and for every release. If you're programming in Java or JavaScript, you can use Serenity BDD, a mature, complex test automation framework that includes the screenplay pattern. Serenity BDD greatly influenced BOA Constrictor, but do note that the two are entirely separate projects. BOA Constrictor is not Serenity BDD for .NET. Instead, BOA Constrictor aims to be a simpler, standalone implementation of the screenplay pattern. If you're programming in Python, hold on to your seats. Python is my personal favorite programming language, and I think it's one of the best languages for test automation. I'm currently developing a screenplay implementation in Python in my spare time. It will be similar to BOA Constrictor, but the code will be even simpler because it's Python. If none of these options suit you, then you can create your own. The screenplay pattern does require a bit of boilerplate code, but it's worthwhile in the end. You can always reference code from BOA Constrictor and Serenity BDD. If you want to see how to refactor an existing test automation project using BOA Constrictor's screenplay pattern, check out this live stream I recently did with Sabotage Andy community manager of SpecFlow. We refactored all the page objects in an existing project into screenplay calls. The amount of code reduced drastically. Even though Sabotage Andy was new to BOA Constrictor, who heard of me? Excuse me, it's early on the US East Coast. <laughs> Even though Sabotage Andy was new to BOA Constrictor, he was able to figure it out easily. So, thank you so much for taking time to learn more about the screenplay pattern and the BOA Constrictor project with me. I'd like to give special thanks to everyone at Precision Lender and Q2 who helped make BOA Constrictor's open source release happen. Again, my name is Andrew Knight. I'm the Automation Panda. Be sure to read my blog, follow me on Twitter, and reach out to me if you'd like to join the BOA Constrictor project. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Andrew. Uh, so we completely understand that it's quite early in the Eastern Coast, and we would like to thank you once again on behalf of the entire team. 
that you have joined quite early and you delivered a wonderful session so guys before we let andrew go uh, so do you have any questions for andrew you can just unmute and uh, ask the questions i think there are a lot of comments which are coming up uh, that your session was really great and so do you have any questions uh, if you have you can just unmute and ask them uh, andrew shrinath here uh, how different is uh, uh, it is compared with the uh, adapter pattern um, i'm not familiar with the adapter pattern okay okay sorry <laughs> Uh, no, 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 no worries. Guys, any more questions uh, for Andrew, which you would like to ask? Mm -hmm. Andrew, maybe you can share uh, the link that you mentioned that we should check it out. Sure. One of the videos, you can uh, drop it in the chat. Maybe that might be helpful. Sure, sure. Here, I'll drop a link to the Bow Constrictor repository on GitHub in the chat. And if you go there, the README will have um, a talk very similar to this one that's uploaded to YouTube. And it will also have a hands-on tutorial. So if you wanted to try Boa Constrictor yourself, I strongly recommend doing the tutorial first because you'll get a guided approach to implementing that test case that we just covered today. Uh, thank you so much, Andrew. Uh, so it's like uh, before you before we let me go, I'd like to formally thank you as well. So let me share my screen quickly in a moment. Yeah, so is my screen visible? Yes. So we would like to thank you, Andrew, for the wonderful session uh, that you delivered just now. And we would like to thank all our partners, uh, the knowledge partner, I Square IT and all our community partners, uh, without their support, uh, the event would have not been possible. So thank you so much, Andrew, once again for the session, and thank you all for joining.